Hello, welcome to the Loyola University of Chicago Library's presentation on the Alumni Authors Catalog. So before we begin, here are some tips to enhance your meeting experience. First, you may select a mode of viewing this presentation. You can either uh, view the speaker only mode and that icon should be on your top right, usually top right of your screen or on gallery mode if you'd like to see everybody who's participating. And second, uh, you may stay on mute or please stay on mute during the presentation just to minimize the background noise, except if you want to speak up, of course. And thirdly, our speaker is open to answering questions during his presentation. So if you wish to ask a question, please unmute. And you can find that on the bottom left of your screen. So unmute your audio so we can hear you. You may also raise your hand, which is a button on your screen. If you click on participants, there's a button there that you can raise your hand virtually or simply raise your hand <laughs> in real time. And lastly, you may also um, choose to select the chat button on your screen. And you can, I'll, I will monitor that and make sure that uh, Peter is able to answer that. Okay, thank you. So without further ado, let's welcome Dean of Libraries, Marian Ryan. Thanks, Jocelyn. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Loyola Library's Fall Speaker Event, the Alumni Authors Catalog, presented by Dr. Peter Gilmore. Um, I am Marianne Ryan, Dean of Libraries, and I'm happy to welcome all of you, and I'm really glad you could join us tonight. Thank goodness for technology like Zoom that can bring us together even in these continuing challenging times. It's the next best thing to being there, although as Joe has pointed out, unfortunately, is it is without a shared wine bottle for us, as we usually have. Not only are we pleased to host this really interesting event tonight, we're really delighted to offer it during National Friends of Libraries Week, an annual celebration of the most special group of library advocates and supporters. National Friends of Libraries Week was established in 2006 and is now in its 15th year. It provides a dedicated opportunity to recognize and acknowledge library friends and to raise awareness of what the library has to offer. One way that we do that is through programming like this, which wouldn't be possible without friend support. So thank you all. And if you're not yet an official friend of the library, so we'd be happy to let you know how you can become one after this program. Before we begin that program, I'd like to acknowledge some of those who are in attendance tonight. First, Miriam Para, current president of our Library Friends Board. Hi, Miriam. Uh, Joseph Starshak, current board member. Hey, Joe. And Bob Seal, friend and dean emeritus of the University Libraries. Hi, Bob. And last but not least, tonight's speaker, Peter Gilmore, who is also a current member of the Friends Board and was in fact its founding president. Before I turn things over to Peter, who I'm told will introduce himself, I would like to give a shout out to Jocelyn Chang, the Library's Community Relations and Communication Coordinator. Uh, Jocelyn organized and orchestrated this event. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. And now I am absolutely pleased to hand the mic, so to speak, over to Peter. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Ryan. Really appreciate that. And um, let me just say at the outset that uh, I have spent most of my life at Loyola University when I add up the years. I graduate, I first set foot on the campus in uh, the fall of 1960, a freshman undergraduate. I graduated uh, four years later. Those were unusual times when you actually graduated in four years. And I was an English major. And then uh, I was familiar with a program that was just beginning at that time I graduated called the Institute of Pastoral Studies. And I actually joined the staff of that summers only program and worked my way through the program. I started teaching in it part time and then uh, full time. And uh, 
I retired uh, 10 years ago, but I still remain uh, active through the Friends of the Libraries pr primarily. So um, as I say, I've spent the majority of my life um, at Loyola University, which is, uh, it puts me in a good position to do what I'm doing uh, today. But I also want to say that um, another thing that, uh, that contributed to my love of libraries was my family. Because uh, I remember as a very young kid, my father came home early one day from work which was highly unusual. And he took me to the library to get my first library card. And then he took me over to the um, card catalog and he showed me how the card catalog worked and how there were subject cards and author cards and title cards. And um, then we went home and had a special dinner. So uh, getting that library card was uh, very memorable in my life and for my father and my mother it was a, a big deal so if any of you have grandchildren or children um neighbors whatever make it a big deal to take them and get their library card because it's going to be possibly a life-changing event for them so um on the next slide you'll see what's already been announced is that uh, is that we're going to be talking about the alumni authors catalog, as, as you can see. And um, on the next slide, it has just a little bit of background information that this is a project of the, no, oh, yeah, there we are, the Friends of the Library, the Friends of the Loyola Libraries has developed the first ever comprehensive catalog of Loyola University Chicago graduates who have published books. This catalog includes fiction and nonfiction, commercially and self-published, co-authored, edited and illustrated books, print or electronic. And the catalog is updated as we are informed of the latest published books by Loyola alums. So this is an ongoing project that I'm going to hopefully live past my, my time on earth and will never be complete because alums of the university uh, in one way, shape or form are, are always uh, contributing to, to the knowledge base of humanity by, by writing. Uh, not everyone, but a, an impressive number of them. So I thought it would be really wonderful to collect this in an ongoing catalog of alumni in terms of uh, of, of what some have, have done. And on the next slide, you can see some of the goals we have for the catalog. Of course, first and foremost, we wanna, author, we wanna honor our alumni authors. That's, that's very, very important. And secondly, if we go back to that previous slide, and secondly, um, we want to inspire prospective and current students, alumni, friends, and visitors. Uh, lots of times uh, uh, there's a lot of publicity around particularly athletic teams, which I'm all for. I want all Loyola athletic teams to win. I want all Chicago teams to win. That's very important. But other things like um, alumni who have published books is, is something that sometimes goes unnoticed. And to actually inspire people with, with this catalog, I think is a, extraordinarily important. And thirdly, one way that, that we're going to do this is we plan to establish a permanent exhibit of alumni authors book, books in the Cudahy Library where they all will be displayed. However, I think it's important to keep in mind that this is not going to be a museum, that those books will be equally available for uh, our clients to take them out and just like any other uh, books uh, outside of the reference collection in, in the library. So we, 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 we do want to create an impressive um, part of the library to honor our, our alums, but also to inspire our, our current students and other people, parents, other people who, who visit the library. I think that's really important. Those of you who maybe have been to the Smithsonian Library in, in Washington, DC, 
know that after the British burned it down in 1812, the War of 1812, that Thomas Jefferson offered his own library uh, to the government to restart the collection. Oh, by the way, the Congress argued for six months over whether they should accept that or not. So you think there's problems today in the Congress, there's problems then too. They eventually decided to accept his collection. And now that is, is a, a permanent set aside collection that can be, can be seen in the Smithsonian. So we're just like Thomas Jefferson in some ways. <laughs> okay, the next catalog, uh, or excuse me, the next slide asks you to, uh, you know, in, make a mental note of no, 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 go back there. How many alumni authors are there, would you estimate? And how many books have been written by alumni authors? So just take a second out to think about where you would take a stab at answering uh, about both of those, those questions, just, just for the fun of it. And then on the next side, slide, we'll see how accurate you are. So on the next slide to date, we have identified close to 300 Loyola alumni authors. Uh, 286 is the exact number for those of you who like to count. And 1,036 books have been written by alumni authors at, at last count. And as I say, this keeps growing every day, every week. So as we hear about, uh, about this, we, um, we, we add them to, to the, uh, to, to the collection, or to the statistics, I should say. So anyway, uh, how do we go about doing this? Well, on the next slide, you'll see that there is no one particular way that this can be, be done. Um, that next slide um, <coughs> or is, indicates some of the methodologies for discovery, since there is no one way we can do this. And more recently, the Loyola Magazine in alumni notes has set aside a particular section for alumni authors to make, uh, uh, you know, to uh, announce them, which has been particularly helpful for, for our project. But also it's a lot, a lot through inter interaction with alums and other people who, um, who know of books that have been published by the Loyola uh, alums. And, that, that's been a big help. Usually if you can find one alumni author, um, he or she frequently knows of other alumni authors and that, that's, been, um, that's been really, really helpful. Um, another thing that you might find a bit weird, but um, nonetheless, it's productive. I tend to read obituaries and in the Chicago paper, there's frequently obituaries on people and I scan them and see if they went to Loyola and if they have written books, it's usually announced in their obituaries. So that's another way that I, um, I, I have done that. I've also made connections with um, people like a, a Jesuit by the name of Father George Lane, who, um, who actually was the head of the Loyola Press for many years. And he, he knew a lot of Jesuits who graduated from Loyola who wrote books and he was very helpful in getting that. And his, his brother who actually has, has worked in our alumni office and advancement office, Marty Lane, for almost as many years as I've been at Loyola, um, <clears throat> has been very helpful too. So um, again, there's no one way to, to do that, but um, it, it, really, it really helps to... Um, uh, so if any of you know of any people who have written books that aren't on the alumni, in the alumni catalog, uh, please, please let us know. So I thought I'd just highlight a few of the books, of the thousand books that uh, uh, are in the catalog that uh, you might find interesting. And uh, the first one on the next slide is, is by Philip Caputo, who graduated in 1964 uh, from, from Loyola. And uh, he wrote a memoir after uh, being in the military in Vietnam called A Rumor of War. 
And this book is still in print to this day. It's published uh, or it's read by many, many different classes and courses around the nation in universities as the best war memoir that's ever been written, most people claim. And uh, it's, it's, it's really become a classic. This is only one of 16 books he's written. The most recent book he published in, uh, in 2019 is called Hunter's Moon, Hunter's Moon. And it's a collection of interrelated short stories. It is very interesting. My favorite book, other than A Rumor of War that he wrote, is, is a book he published in 2013 called The Longest Road. And he actually, this is a nonfiction book, and he started in Key West, Florida, and he drove diagonally northwest across the mainland of the United States, up through Canada, up through Alaska, close to the northern slope. And he stopped and he interviewed people about what it was like living in America, where, where they were. And he tried to answer this one question, why does the United States get along as well as it does with all the diversity in it? He might have to revise that book today, but back then that was his, that was his operative question. And one of the conclusions he came to was because our country is so spread out, we can get along because a lot of people are living so remotely from other people that, um, that that's the way it goes. So I, I found that I, I'm kind of a sucker for travelogue books and I thought that was really interesting. On the next slide, we have, uh, we have two Chicago authors uh, that are, are relatively famous. In fact, I'd say very famous. Uh, uh, Sandra Cisneros, a 1976 graduate of uh, Loyola. Her book uh, that made her famous was The House on Mango Street that received quite a bit of attention and is still considered a very important Chicago book. And she's, of course, published a, a lot of other things since. Stuart Dybeck, uh, who graduated in 1964, um, uh, also is considered the master of the short story today. And his book, uh, The Coast of Chicago, which was published several years ago now, and was actually a one book, one Chicago uh, selection so several years ago, um, is, is very famous. His two most recent books, uh, one of them is called Aesthetic Cahoots, which is 50 short stories and then he just published that about two years ago. And uh, simultaneously, he published another book called Paper Lantern, Love Stories. Again, uh, other, other short, short stories that he, he wrote. Um, so he's a very prolific uh, author that uh, we, we count amongst our um, alumni authors. On the next slide, we have uh, we have a, a Jesuit by the name of Anthony DeMello, who uh, is deceased at this particular time. And he has, uh, he has written a number of uh, spirituality books, uh, 13 books, are, well, plus the one I mentioned here is, is in the catalog. And he, he was a Jesuit from uh, India who got a master's in education here in the uh, in the 60s and went on to, uh, to become a, a, a worldwide famous spiritual writer. Um, we also have a number of, of authors who, uh, who really reflect uh, contemporary diversity. And on the next slide, uh, we have a, a, a novel by uh, Jack Fritcher who graduated with a PhD in 1968. And uh, he, has, he has written several, several novels centering on, on the gay world in San Francisco. Uh, Michael J. Ma Maher, who graduated with a Master's of Pastoral Studies degree in uh, 1999, wrote a nonfiction book called Being Gay and Lesbian in the Catholic High School, where he, he really investigates that, that whole uh, that whole phenomenon. And of course, in 1999, that was really a, a very much of a, 
a groundbreaking book because those kind of things weren't talked about as they are, are today. So the LGBTQ uh, diversity uh, 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 books that have been written by alumni authors, those are two of them that are, are, are very important. The next slide um, is an author by the name of Daniel Quinn who graduated from Loyola in uh, 1958. And uh, he wrote a very uh, famous novel some years ago called, called Ishmael that was published in 1992, a philosophical novel that, that really takes on uh, contemporary culture, business practices, uh, life, thing, things like that, and, and really was, was a bestseller for, for many, many years. He just died uh, two years ago in 2018. Another book, um, next slide please, um, was, um, was written by Leo Latz, who got his medical degree in 1930. And this, this was a book on birth control using, uh, birth, on the rhythm method of birth control, which at the time was very controversial in the Catholic world. And um, he, he wrote a, a book really um, uh, championing that. And because of it, he lost his position at Loyola Medical School where he was later teaching because it was simply too controversial at the time. But as a standout, <clears throat> as a standout book. <clears throat> now, uh, I could go on and on and on with, with other books, but. I think the important thing, which I won't do, of course, but the important thing to remember here is, is that there's a wide spectrum of subject matters and uh, topics, both uh, novel, novels, fiction and nonfiction. Just going to mention a few that I don't have slides on for, but um, one of our graduates wrote, wrote a book on the, the carvings of gravestones in eastern Massachusetts from 1750 to 1850, um, from slate to marble is the, the title of that book. So that, that's a very interesting book. He was a philosophy major, so, you know, it, it, you don't necessarily end up writing a book on, you know, what, what you um, majored in. Uh, another book that was relatively famous in Chicago called The Crime of the Century. And this book by William Martin centered and some of us who remember this who grew up in Chicago and elsewhere close by Richard Speck and the murder of student eight student nurses that took place in Chicago tragically on the south side of Chicago. Uh, he, he wrote a book uh, on, on that subject. Another graduate John Ross Jr wrote a book of poems called Goat Troubles and Other Poems and those of you, uh, particularly Mary Ann Ryan, who might be familiar with the goat tradition of the Chicago Cubs will recognize where that title comes from. Another book by, uh, by a, a Turkish author who went to Loyola, uh, Takma Ki is his last name, I'm probably mispronouncing it. He wrote a book on modern Turkish ships. Now, I don't know anything about modern Turkish ships, but that just shows you some of the, the wide uh, spectrum that, that people write about. And then another person wrote, um, wrote a song book. He published a, a song book of 27 songs for children. Uh, Stephen Titra is his name. And he wrote a book called, a song book called Be Nice to Spiders, Be Kind to Snakes. So that's the title of, uh, of that book. So as I say, I just mentioned those in passing to, to show what a great diversity of, uh, of uh, work that has been done. The next slide um, also shows, the next slide please. Do we have the next slide? There we are. The next slide shows uh, many people who actually have served on the uh, faculty of Loyola who also are graduates of Loyola who have written books and are in the, um, in the um, uh, alumni uh, authors catalog. 
uh, you can you can see uh, I've already mentioned James Blockowitz who who wrote from slate to marble. He, he he went on eventually taught philosophy at Loyola. You see a lot of Jesuits there also who graduated from Loyola. I'll talk about that. And quite humbly, I'm going to point out my own name out there too. So um, uh, anyway, on the next slide, we see. Um, we see uh, the number of Jesuit authors who graduated from Loyola. And you can see uh, that it's been quite a number of them. Uh, the Jesuits uh, had uh, for about 30 years had a division of Loyola University called West Baden College down in West Baden, Indiana. It was a division of Loyola University and the Jesuits in training got their undergraduate degrees at that college of Loyola University. And then back in the day um, when, when the Jesuits had a, a very regimented way of going about training their, their members, uh, there was a three year period of their training where they taught high school. And then in the summers they would come to Loyola or other schools and get master's degrees in the subject that they were subjects that they were teaching. So, so therefore, many of these Jesuits came to Loyola in the summers when they were teaching high school during the school years to uh, get their master's degree. The next slide probably shows the most famous uh, Loyola Jesuit. Can we have the next slide? Ah, yes, uh, Raymond Baumhart, uh, who graduated from the West Baden College of Loyola University in 1950. And he was the president of Loyola University from 1970 to 1990, the longest serving president in Loyola's history. Uh, he's, he's written five books that are on the alumni authors uh, uh, catalog and, and he, he just died, uh, I think it was two years ago. So um, the next last slide is actually a picture of um, West Baden College of Loyola University. And now it's, it's a hotel. It was a hotel before the Loyola, before the Jesuits came into, uh, into ownership of it in the 1930s. And now it has been, um, uh, the, uh, gone back to a hotel, then the place has been completely, uh, co completely renovated. And if you're ever in southern Indiana, it's really a fascinating place to, to, to go and visit. So uh, there, there's, there's a, a, pic a picture of it. Um, on the next slide, I, I selected the most prolific authors um, in the uh, alumni catalog. Uh, you can see all of them have written between 25 and, and 30 books. Uh, three of them are Jesuits. Uh, Gerard Egan uh, is actually a, a diocese, the Archdiocese of Chicago priest who also served um, in the um, uh, psychology department as a faculty member here. And Joe Proprocki, who uh, is last on the list, actually works at the Loyola Press which has nothing to do with Loyola University, except we share a common name and a common vision and a common love for books. So uh, uh, some people on the catalog have written a single book, some people have written a handful, and some people have written dozens. So it's, uh, it, it, it's quite, quite impressive. And then uh, on the next slide, uh, the oldest, and by oldest, I mean the the earliest alum is the way I should have phrased it. The oldest, uh, the earliest alum uh, author is a Jesuit by the name of Gilbert Garrigan. And he graduated in 1889 with a BA from Loyola. And at that time, the graduating classes might have been 10 or 12 or 15 people. It was a very different kind of, uh, of uh, situation then. And he wrote a very important book called The Catholic Church in Chicago, 1673 to 1871. And for those of you familiar with Chicago history, you know that in 1871, Chicago burned down. 
And with the Great Chicago Fire, all sorts of records were lost, including most of the records of the Catholic Church in Chicago. So he actually went around and interviewed people who were still alive and uh, gathered as much history as he could and published that because that history was pretty well wiped out by the Great Chicago Fire. Very important book. He's written 15 other books, 14 other books that are listed in the catalog. And he was a member of the Loyola's history department at one time and served as, as chairman for uh, a, a, number, a number of years. So um, if you, the next slide, if you want to um, see who some of the newest known alumni authors are, you can check uh, the alumni, Loyola Alumni Magazine. Uh, I think it's currently online, but we'll resume to, to the print edition perhaps after the, uh, the um, pandemic, but I've already made reference to the fact that they have a special section for, for that. And lastly, if you come in, uh, in the next slide, if you come and um, visit the library, uh, hopefully in the near future, uh, we, will, we will have a, a permanent uh, display of, of all the books on the alumni authors catalog. And um, you'll be able to check them out too. Uh, uh, so that's, that's a work in progress that um, we're, we're, we're looking to, uh, to see. So um, that's, uh, that hopefully will give you some idea of the, um, of the Loyola alumni catalog. And on the next um, slide, I think um, one of the questions that I deal with, uh, which I think is real important, I like to call it the next chapter, what is the historical significance of the information in the Loyola Alumni Authors Catalog? I think there is a historical significance to what our alums have done, what they have written about, etc. cetera. And um, actually I gave a presentation last year or two years ago to the master's degree students in our public history program. And they were quite fascinated with the whole thing. And lastly, and then I'll stop talking, I promise. The next slide is a little bit of a challenge. Might you someday write a book to be added to the Loyola Alumni Authors Catalog? I look forward to that moment. So thanks for listening. And uh, I hope you found this as interesting as I have found working on it for the last uh, eight, nine years. Do you want to take it from here, Jocelyn? Oh, gladly. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to hear you and learn something new every day. Um, for the catalog, it is now um, available on the Loyola University of Chicago Library's blog, which you'll see the, the link there. And I will also send it to everyone on the chat if you wish. But the other way is certainly to simply Google it and you can find it using those keywords that Peter has kindly shared with us. So I hope that you'll take a look and uh, suggestions are always welcome too. So thank you. Hmm. I guess we could proceed with questions from the participants. And you may now unmute yourself or send a message in the chat or feel free. You can unmute. There's Marianne waving her hand. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question. I can kick, I can kick us off um, with the questions. Um, so Peter, um, not to put you on the spot, but how many of these, I think it's 1,036 now books um, have you read? And, <laughs> um, and, and um, do you have a favorite? Well, I haven't read all of them. I've read a lot of them, not um, by a lot. I, I, re I read a lot, but, um, you know, by a lot, I'm not going to say I've read the majority of, 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 of the books there, but uh, uh, my favorite is probably uh, Stuart Dybeck's uh, books. 
because he's a Chicago author. He's also a friend of mine. And we, uh, we were English majors together in undergraduate school at, at Loyola. And some of his short stories are set on the Lakeshore campus. And uh, some of them are set in Rogers Park, uh, the neighborhood around the Lakeshore campus. So uh, when I read his short stories, it not only, he's not only the master of the short story, but he also takes me back to, to uh, you know, days of yore, shall we say, that I, I, really, I really enjoy. And then I try to figure out what's fact and what's fiction in, in some of his short stories. So I would, I would point to him as, uh, as one of my favorites. Mm. Thank you. We have time for more, so feel free. I, I should mention Peter, while we're thinking, um, you inspired us to create a video series so that now we have this opportunity to show here uh, from the alumni authors themselves, uh, excerpts from their work. So. Um, you just begin, just begin uh, releasing those videos, but um, you will hear more about those and you can read uh, more about them too uh, on the blog. But I believe Joe had a question. So go ahead, Joe. What was the greatest surprise in your research to develop this list? I think, uh, that's a really good question. There, there were several, several surprises. I, I think, I think one of the great surprises for me was, uh, was how many graduates that actually uh, has that, have actually written books on the variety of subjects that they, they have. Uh, that that was uh, a delight for me, and uh, of course, it's only going to can, uh, keep growing. So that that. I, when I began this project, I had no idea uh, how many books might be uh, have been authored by by Loyola graduates, and I, I was delightfully surprised to find out uh, uh, so many. So that that was uh, that was a big surprise for me. Bob. Bob. Bob, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Okay. You, I do Zoom all the time. You think I would know what to do? Um, of the of the one thousand plus books uh, in your list, and I'm I'm pl very pleased to see how much it's grown since we last talked about it. Uh, approximately, what percentage are books that are already owned by the Loyola Libraries? In other words, you talked about creating a nice exhibit. Do you have a an idea of how many books already are in the in the collection? Because uh, I'm sure a lot are out, are out of print, or they're you know whatever. I must admit that I really I really don't know that answer, um, and I don't think we've really researched that uh, to the extent that uh, could answer your question accurately. However, in my closet here, where I live, I have two cartons of alumni author books that I've just collected through the years that, um, you know, uh, I, will, I will be donating to, uh, uh, to, to the library. If we don't have those in our collection, we, we can uh, put, the, put those in. But may, maybe Dean Ryan would like to speak to that too. Um, I would. So uh, we did begin to research Peter's list to see how many of them we, we have. Um, we did not make it through that entire list, but the reason that we began to um, make an effort to discover how many we had is that we had designated a space for the display and had um, a piece of furniture to begin to house the display. Um, and in the midst of all of the excitement in our planning, uh, there was a significant rain 
and the ceiling collapsed in the space where we had um, designated that we would have the display. So all that I can say is thank God we didn't yet set the display up and um, have it um, there to be destroyed at that point. But that sort of took the wind out of our sails and we, we had put the, the project on hold at that point. Understandable. <laughs> I'm sure you remember those water challenges. Oh, yes. But thank you. Thanks for your answers. I have a comment. Um, so when, uh, when Peter and I first started to talk about this project, um, and then the uh, presentation that he mentioned giving to the public history students I was in attendance at and just um, I think that this is always just such a great promotion for this collection, but um, I am a, a, a big cook. And so I had asked him if there were any cookbooks uh, in the collection. And um, he mentioned to me that there was one called Burnt Offerings, which um, I thought was just a, a delightful title. And so shortly after we talked, um, I went out and, and scoured for a copy of it. And there aren't a lot of them available. As, as Bob mentioned, a lot of these things are out of print, but I was able to secure a copy of Burnt Offerings and I have it in my cookbook collection. And so if we don't turn one up for the alumni authors display in the library, when the time comes for that, I will donate my Burnt Offerings to, to the collection. I think there's a second book, cookbook, on the list called um, called Cooking for Crowds, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember the author's name right offhand, but uh, but I, I think that's another cookbook. I'll have to check into that. Sounds interesting. Uh, Terry, Terry has a question. Hi, Terry. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, Professor Gilmore. Hi, Bob. Hi, everyone. Hi, this Terry. is Terry at uh, staff at Lewis Library down the Water Tower campus. I have a question for you. How was the list compiled of Loyola faculty who were also authors? Because I would like to offer a couple names I didn't see on the list. And I noticed because students would come to the library and ask, do you have my professor's book? Do you have my professor's book? So I would like to share those with you if possible. Oh, that would be yeah. wonderful. And that's a great example of, of number one, that there is no uh, systematic way we can go about it. And number two, this is the kind of information that gets fed into the catalog that makes it more and more complete. So if you could, if you could uh, send me that information, that would be really wonderful. Great. I'll be more than happy to. Thank you. Now, one thing, Terry, re remember, mm -hmm. remember that these are, these are faculty members who have written books who have graduated from Loyola. Not, okay, not I got you. Faculty members, but, but Loyola alum faculty members, so. Okay, I'll check my facts before I send. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. We're welcome to. Oh, Bob. Yes. I, I just have, I have a totally. Please, no, under, this is good. This is. I have, a, yes, I have an unrelated question. I'm just curious about. I know that the IC is now open again for study and so on, but is the Gilmore Cafe open? No, I'm afraid that that is not open because uh, it's just outside of the Information Commons area. And that, that is uh, completely closed off. Okay. However, I just want to give a shout out to the, to the library and the library staff because uh, as of the fall semester, they started uh, re or circulating books through contactless, uh, um, uh, a contactless procedure where you could order books in the collection online and then they would go and get them out of the stacks and then they would say they have retrieved them from the, sta the stacks 
and then you make an appointment to pick up the books and they're in a almost a hermetically sealed uh, bag and uh, they're waiting for you um, on, on shelves on, in, the, in the information commons and they've already been checked out in, in, your, in your name. So you just pick up the, the bag and, uh, and leave or you can, you can hang around if you want. Um, but that contactless methodology has really been um, wonderful to, uh, to, well, for me personally, uh, but also for anyone who uses the library. And I, I think it's just a, a wonderful system that keeps us reading and keeps us healthy. Thank you, Dean Ryan. I'm glad that you are able to use that service, Peter. We've had a lot of really positive feedback about it. We should, yes. Well, thank you, everyone. Shall we continue with Q and A? I were we're here till six, so we can continue that or move into our more informal meet and greet. It's it's been really a, a nice nice little of exchange of our ideas and questions, so. I have a question, Jocelyn, if I can. Oh, certainly, Miriam, and then Yolan. Great. Uh, Peter, I know this is sort of an ongoing endeavor in terms of uh, the alumni authors, but I'm just sort of curious, what other uh, projects do you have uh, coming up? I'm, I'm interested. You mentioned a plant collection earlier, which I'm now already thinking about in my mind, what kind of plant collection I might be developing. But I'd love to know what projects you have coming up. You mean personally? Personally involved with the libraries, any, anything you'd like to share if, you, if you're comfortable to do so. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Ab absolutely. The alumni authors catalog is, is my major project with the with the Loyola libraries. My second major project is taking out books to read. I'm reading books all the time and that's why I think this contactless pickup is such a wonderful service. Um, I usually go away in the winter months which um, is not in the cards because of the pandemic and I spent so much time outside this summer I was thinking how can I bring the how can I bring the uh, summer inside for the, uh, the long cold winter that I'm not looking forward to? So I decided to start an indoor plant collection and I now have about a dozen, 15 different plants, um, including two coffee plants um, that I'm uh, ca taking care of and uh, hopefully will survive the winter. So that's, that's, my, that's my winter project. I also have, um, have written um, uh, some articles for the uh, for the newspaper, the National Catholic Reporter, and just yesterday they accepted a, a third article that I, that I wrote that will probably be published uh, in early in early December. So um, I keep myself busy uh, writing writing short pieces. Um, I know how much work it is to write a book, so I, I don't think at this point in my life I'm going to take on writing a whole book, but I really love writing short pieces. Thank you. And what about yourself? Which, which part? Either writing? One, either anything you'd like to say in terms of meet and greet that we're into now. Oh, sure. Um, I, I, I keep... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, Jocelyn, do you want to take the last question? Yes, and then we'll we, have I'm happy a to dive question in. from, yes, we'd like to hear that. <laughs> so we have a question from Yolan. Well, oh. I, just have, Yolan. I just have a comment about uh, Father Raymond Baumhart, who wrote wonderful books. And um, if you haven't had a chance to read them, please do. They're not very long, but they're full of humor and a great history of his time at Loyola. So if you want a good read, uh, his books are, are, are wonderful. Thank you. But with this, uh, if 
everyone's okay with this. So I would like to thank Peter once more for his generous time and sharing his talents and, and information about his wonderful project. So I want to just point to everybody the, on your screen, you'll see our website. And again, uh, find out more about upcoming programs, services, uh, the libraries. And you'll also uh, see some of our social media pages. So if you're so inclined, you can check us out on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. So all those wonderful channels. So thank you so much and have a good one. Thank you. Thank you all.